Hello, and welcome to the video recording of a live demo for NetApp's copy free transition feature. This new feature, available in Cluster Data ONTAP 8.3.2 and the 7 Mode Transition Tool 2.2, allows storage administrators to quickly migrate terabytes of data from Data ONTAP running in 7 Mode to Cluster Data ONTAP with just a few mouse clicks and some cable swaps. The demo was recorded with the intention of showing how easily this process can be completed. Now, sit back and watch as we take data migration from Data on Tap, operating in 7 mode, to the next level. The first thing we did in this demo was connect a SIF share to the client we ran the 7 mode transition tool on. We wanted to create some data on the 7 mode system to show that the data we transitioned actually existed. To create the data, we ran a script that created a number of folders and then copied a video file to those folders. When we run the script, we specify a folder name and a number between 25 and 100. In this case, we chose CFT rules because, well, it does. We created 25 folders with video files. These folders get created on the SIF share hosted on our 7 mode system. We select one of the folders and open it up. As you can see, the video shows data migration being done the hard way. NetApp is making transition easier than ever with copy-free transition, and we intend to prove that today. What you're seeing right now is a montage of us racking gear into our travel rack, preparing the demo for its trip to Insight. In this demo, we use the 7 Mode Transition Tool 2.2. However, as you watch this video, there may already be a new release of the tool available. Be sure that you are using the latest possible version of the tool for the latest and greatest features. We log in as our user, and on the splash screen, we can see a graphic that illustrates the steps performed in copy-free transition. Anywhere you see a gear, that means the steps are automated by the tool. The M denotes when there are manual steps. To get started, click Plan a New Project. On this screen, we see that we have an HA pair running 7 mode added to the tool, as well as a cluster management lift for our cluster data on tap cluster running 8.32 or later. Once the systems have been added, click Next. On this screen, we need to select the checkbox on the left to choose the seven most systems we are moving data from. Then we click Create Project. Once we click Create Project, we can name the project and place it into a project group or create a new project group. Project groups are intended to help organize multiple migrations from multiple HA pairs. Now we are ready to select our cluster data on tap cluster. In this demo, we are doing HA pair to HA pair. This screen provides the ability to map the seven mode nodes to the cluster nodes via the swap node mapping button. Once everything looks as expected, click save and continue. From here, we can control which V filers in seven mode get mapped to which storage virtual machines in cluster data on tap. For copy-free transition to work properly, we need to have placeholder storage virtual machines in which to place data. These placeholders will be skeletons of what a full storage virtual machine would look like. Volumes, exports, shares, and other configurations will be migrated over from the 7 mode V filers. This screen also allows us to control what junction path style will be used for NAS volumes. Junction paths are required for access to data volumes in NAS environments. Once the mappings are chosen, click Save Mapping and then Next. Now we get to choose the IP addresses for the destination storage system. Here we select the IP addresses that will be migrated over from the 7 mode system to the cluster data on tap system. These IP addresses will be created as data lifts on the assigned storage virtual machine and placed into a down state to prevent IP conflicts. If you notice, there are some red boxes on this screen. These show that we are missing necessary information to migrate the IP addresses. In this case, it's a missing default gateway. However, because these IP addresses are used for the ACP interfaces, we will simply choose not to migrate the interfaces. Here we can review the IP addresses and confirm these are indeed the interfaces we want to migrate. Once we are satisfied, we click Next. On the next screen, we can run our pre-checks. Pre-checks in the copy-free transition tool allow us to verify that there are no options or features in use on the 7 mode system that are unsupported by cluster data on tap. One example of this would be 32-bit aggregates. The pre-checks are intended to prevent issues during migration and check for potential pitfalls that could cause production outages. Again, this illustrates the value of the copy-free transition tool, the ability to assist storage administrators to make informed decisions. 
During the pre-checks, if any errors appear, then they must be corrected before proceeding. Warnings can be reviewed in the tool and corrected if necessary. Some of the warnings you may see involve things like options that can't be transitioned, or users and groups that already exist in the storage virtual machine. If you need to filter warnings, use the checkboxes. Once you're satisfied and see no errors, click Close and then Next. On this screen, there are a series of tabs where you can review the configuration details of the project, such as mapped storage virtual machines, mapped volumes, aggregates, networking, and operation history. Under Operation History, you can click View Results to get a more granular look. If you need to make changes to anything, click Back. Otherwise, when finished reviewing, click Go to Dashboard. On the dashboard, if you see green, you're good to go. The next step is applying the storage virtual machine configuration. This step will create the data lifts and set the options exported from the 7-mode system to prepare the cluster data on tap cluster for data migration. Again, during this process, you want to check for errors. Errors will prevent us from continuing. Warnings and info messages should be reviewed and acted upon as necessary. You can filter to check for errors, warnings, and info messages by clicking the checkboxes. If you need more detail for a specific task, click the plus sign to expand the message. After this completes successfully, check for errors and click Close. The next step is Check Readiness, which is essentially a rerun of the pre-checks. This step is in place for instances where you may have waited a period of time between Apply Storage Virtual Machine Configuration and the next stage of Export and Halt. Since this demo was run in a small window and no changes were made on the source or destination systems, we can skip this step. But in actual migrations, it's highly recommended to check readiness as well as leveraging the Config Advisor to ensure the cabling is done properly on the systems. The next phase is Export and Halt. This phase does exactly what it says. It exports the 7-mode data and halts the 7-mode system. As such, you must be sure that all clients that were accessing the 7-mode systems are disconnected to avoid any data loss or outage. The export phase includes removal of disk ownership from the 7-mode system. This process is fully automated by the tool and done via the service processor interfaces of the 7-mode system. So it is imperative that these are configured and that no one is logged into the service processor during the copy-free transition process. Export and halt is by far the longest of the processes in this demo as it involves booting into maintenance mode and halting the system several times. In our demo, it took around 10 minutes to complete. In the interest of time, we skipped a portion of this stage. In actual migrations, the longest phase will likely be the import phase, where the data is actually being imported and export policies, quotas, and SIF shares are created. Cabling the shelves could also add to the overall migration time. Before we import, however, we must move the cables and verify the cabling. It is crucial to run the Config Advisor on the systems to ensure the cabling is done with Multipath HA in mind. The 7-mode transition tool will not allow you to continue if the systems are not cabled to MPHA standards. The video clip you are now seeing shows an actual cable move during our live demo. In this case, we only moved one shelf in four cables. Be sure to power cycle the seven mode shelves during this process to ensure there is no shelf ID conflict on the new systems. The shelves should show all green before moving on to the cable verification. In our demo, we used a travel rack. That meant all of our systems were very close together, making the cabling quick and simple. This is obviously not the reality of a data center where racks may be hundreds of meters apart and cabling jobs may remind you more of thick jungles in enterprise data centers. The amount of time needed to perform the cabling depends on the number of shelves being cabled, the distance between shelves and heads, and if any hardware needs to be physically moved in the data center. Again, make use of Config Advisor. And if you have ACP available, use it. It will help avoid headaches from wedged modules causing MPHA issues and forcing you to take downtime to, power to power cycle shelves. The actual cable verification takes very little time to complete when everything is done properly. When you click Verify Cabling, the 7-mode transition tool will ask you if you want to continue and remind you of the virtues of using Config Advisor. If you feel like you are ready to proceed, click Yes. The cable verification will then check the ports to ensure everything is functioning properly and plugged in where the tool expects them to be. 
If you run into issues during this process, be sure the shelf you power cycled was finished power cycling and rerun Config Advisor to ensure cabling is correct. The next phase is import of the 7-mode shelves into Cluster Data ONTAP. A number of things happen here. The disks are reassigned to the Cluster Data ONTAP systems, and the volumes and aggregates are converted to Cluster Data ONTAP style of objects. This process is actually fairly fast. What may be the longest part of this process is the import of the exports, quotas, SIF shares, and other configurations associated with volumes and queue trees. The amount of time this portion takes will depend on the total number of objects rather than the amount of data. Once the import takes place, the IP addresses the tool created and placed into a down state are brought up and made ready for testing. The amount of time copy-free transition will take may vary. We had a customer that did a copy-free transition of 100 terabytes of data in less than an hour and 30 minutes of downtime. Our demo used a small data set of less than 100 gigabytes and only had a few volumes. That process took 20 minutes end to end. Again, the amount of downtime is not affected by the amount of data, but by the number of objects. Copy-free transition can be that fast. Much of the time required for copy-free transition is planning. Be sure you have planned properly before migration. Again, we'll cut some of this process in the interest of time for this video. When the process completes, be sure to check for errors and warnings as well as reviewing what was imported. You are looking for red errors. Errors mean we cannot continue until they are corrected. If you notice, vol0 from the 7mode systems came over in the migration. This is the root volume for 7mode. These volumes can likely be destroyed, and the aggregates hosting them can be reclaimed if no production data was stored on them. The next step in the process will be committing the data to the cluster data on tap system. This step essentially states that you are satisfied with the transition and ready to make the leap to cluster data on tap. This step should be performed after testing and with the information in mind that once you commit, the aggregate level snapshots used for a fast rollback to 7 mode will be deleted. If you need to go back to 7 mode after this step, you would have to do it via host based copy. If you write data to the disks before committing and decide to roll back, that data will be lost, as the ensuing snap restore will revert this system to the state before the migration completed. Be sure to make a decision one way or the other at your earliest convenience to avoid these scenarios. The following shows slides of the commit phase. We didn't perform a commit in this video in the interest of preserving the demo systems to allow us quick rollback to perform new demos. These slides show the post-commit phase. All that happens here is the ag aggregate level snapshots are deleted and we can move on to serving production data. After the commit phase, you are able to review what was transitioned amongst the map volumes, aggregates, and networking. You can also review the operation history to see what tasks were successful and what tasks failed. For more details about the failed tasks, you can click View Results. Additionally, the 7 mode transition tool offers robust logging for events to allow you to accurately pinpoint where failures occur. Now that the transition is complete, we can test our SIFS data and see that the video files we created are still there and now running in our cluster data ONTAP system using the same IP addresses we had for the 7 mode systems. Our script mounts the share and we can see the video is still intact. NetApp is indeed making transition easier than ever. Hopefully you enjoyed this video demo of copy-free transition from NetApp and it shows you just how fast, simple, and seamless migrating your data from 7 mode can be. Thanks for listening.